direction. That's a fascial application. Um, if you're trying to release, build flexibility, you actually want to move in the plane of the muscle. To get, put that in a real world application, if I'm talking about my bicep and I have a trigger point here, I really want to kind of do this. This is one spot. But if I don't have a particular spot that I'm addressing, then I want to roll in the line of the muscle fibers. we talk about that a little bit later. Um, the other thing is with the foam roll, I'm trying to, I'm trying to take everybody in consideration here. Not everybody has the ability to hold themselves up like this. Or like this. And if you're like me and you work with older folks too, and I got a bunch of them, wrist, oh man, I hurt my wrist. Oh, I got a rotator cuff tear. I can't do this. And you go, what do I do? So there's so much of this. I mean, by the time I've gotten these worked out, I've got an upper body, I've got my upper body workout in. Because <laughs> I'm holding myself up the whole time. And my wrist extension is, you know, I might as well find a yoga class. I'm stuck in flight position for 10 minutes. So with the med balls and the stick, I don't have that problem. See, I'm not supporting myself. So if so, they're easier to control and easier to progress. And you can instead of having to use a harder assault, you can just put less pressure on yourself. That's what I like. Also, if you're really into using self uh, self myofascial release as part of your pre warm up or warm up, um, the sticks are better because again, you're not laying on the floor. This would be me on the floor, and you're just kind of laying over the roller. Like, ah. <laughs> you know, this kind of gets you. This kind of gets you revved up. You know. So the B list, the B list is uh, the tennis ball and the different foam rollers. So let me make sure I cover everything there. Um, up on the wrist, cut the body stretch. Good to go. Yes, sir. Uh, I personally think the foam rollers are for pussies. What do you think about PVC pipes and stuff? Who do you hang out with? Does that create like other problems? I'm gonna talk about the progression actually in like one or more one or two more slides. The bigger the tent, the denser the athlete, like a big bodybuilder type dude that like uh Alan was showing, if they can, they've gone through all this stuff and they're still good. Sometimes you need to really hit them with a something that like a like a PVC. <laughs> 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 um, but normally that's when you go to like a harder medicine ball or just a smaller thing that's a little more a little more direct. And if somebody doesn't have, if they don't, if you don't have any specific, uh, keep keep in mind this is this is just maintenance. This is not an active thing that's going to change movement patterns. What you're doing is you're offsetting, you know, certain stresses that you're putting on your body, certain chronic areas that are tight. All you're doing is you're down-regulating areas that maybe get that get worked a lot. You're not actually changing anything. As soon as you get off the roller, you're re re uh, uh, re incorporating the same movement patterns that you did when you laid on the roller. So whatever caused your IT to tighten up again, unless you fix the problem. The IT is going to tighten up again, but it's much easier to start making progress if you manage some of the symptoms as well as start to take care of maybe what's the problem as well. And a lot of that would take probably ankle stability and, and glute strength because the knee's kind of stuck in the middle there. Normally when I see tightness here, I think here and here, and I try to strengthen here, and Brett will talk all about that, and I try to take care of the ankle. Normally, the IT problem down regulates itself, but I still will do it just to make sure I keep everything, uh, keep all the trigger points away that could have potential to flare up. Yes. What are the uh, um, what are the ankle stability exercises that you? I, I have a few that I use, but I'm, I could always use more. Uh, we can talk about it later. Oh, on our own. I just don't want to start, you know, get off the two topic of this as SMR talk. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe I mean, I'm, you know, I'm I'm here, so if you want to, after Brett's done, you want to. Yeah, maybe during the practical stuff we can go over. Stuff. All right, so you can't overdo it. That's why we need progression. I kind of already hit this before, but there's two ways to progress or regress SMR. Change the surface area, bigger surface area, easier, smaller surface area, harder. So if I rolled on that blue medicine ball on my hip, that would be a lot more tolerable than that. Common sense. Also density, that white roller is kind of soft got a little pliability to it, I can get my thumbs in it. 
but these, this black one is a much tougher, it's closer to PVC, and then PVC obviously is more dense, so that would be a progression. You guys understand that? Alright. A couple program design tips, and then uh, you'll, be, you'll be ready to go? Yep. How, much, how long have I been speaking so far? How long, when did we start, guys? 15 minutes. Maybe 15 minutes? I think so, yeah. I think yeah. Alright. Okay. Yeah, two. So, so what we'll do when we do the practice, Brett's going to jump up after I'm done here. i got a few more slides. He's going to do his lecture, right? Yep. And then I'll come back and I'll do the practical stuff, my fast release stuff. What we'll do is we'll do the basic stuff, the things that I think you guys are already doing. I'll show you how we do it just in case it, we can tweak it for you. And then I'll show you a couple techniques you might not have seen or uh, might be new to you. Sound good? A yeah. few right. program design tips. Again, I use it at the end of my workout. Uh, I tend to, what I've read, so the SMR works best when you're already warm. So if you use it at the end of the workout, you're already warm. You already have a little more pliability of tissue. I also prefer to have my clients use of my fascial release at home on their off days, active rest days. That's another reason why I like to do it at the end of a workout. Because if you have someone who really does have a lot of uh, hot spots, trigger points, tightnesses, they could be on this thing for 15, 20 minutes. And if I'm going to have, and if they have all these issues, and I have them do it for two minutes, because I have just starting an hour session, I only have an hour with them, and they're paying me a lot of money for that hour. I'm kind of a thief if I just sit there and watch them roll around, number one. Number two, there's no proof that they need to do it first, and it's taken into my time. Number three, at the end of a workout, they've got all the time they want in the world to do it. So, hey, go in the corner, roll. I can, while I'm warming up and exercise, I can kind of, hey, you know, get that foot over here, do this a little bit. And when you're at home, go do it at home on your own too. The more consistent you can do it, the better off you'll be. The more you can manage things. So again, I kind of covered that. Use it on your rest or active recovery days. Your deload days is another way to put it. Uh, use it before static stretching. You will, I promise you, you'll get a lot more. I don't think anybody could argue. Who knows if they would get more out of their low back and hamstring stretches after doing that tennis ball thing? Absolutely. So the same thing for your pecs and everywhere else. Um, and again, that just changes symptoms. So I will talk about, I'll rehook up my computer. I have the general recommendations about how many rolls and whatnot. I'll bring this back when we do the practical. All right? Thank you, guys. I'll, I'll be back in about an hour.